about that. So um, we'll see what happens with that. Now, in terms of some other news, let's talk about something else that happened. This is a, an article that I saw over the weekend of the Drudge Report, Washington Post, Eyewash, how the CIA deceives its own workforce about operations. Basically, <laughs> what this is, no. they call this eyewash. Remember, it was the CIA and the U.S. government that created the term brainwash, and they did that back in the Korean War. Mm -hmm. They had soldiers who had been uh, captured, caught or captured, and they would do things and say things that would embarrass the American government, whether they were under pressure or whatever. The American government came up with a new term called brainwash, like mind control, okay, and everybody was captivated by that. The interesting thing is, is that it really wasn't uh, mind control, but the people who were working on that very hard were DARPA, and uh, the American government, the Pentagon. And of course, we have talked about compartmentalization. The fact that the people at top would have uh, uh, one agenda that they were working on and everybody else below them would think that something completely different was happening. And that was yes. very intentional. And that's what this is about. <laughs> Washington Post is talking about eyewash, how the CIA deceives its own workforce about operations. They say senior CIA officials have for years intentionally deceived parts of the agency workforce by transmitting internal memos that contain false information about operations and sources overseas. And this is according to current and former U.S. officials. They call the practice eyewash. But <laughs> now is this eyewash? Okay. Are we being eyewash? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, we have the article, you guys, uh, you can pull it up right here, current memos. The CIA will openly propagandize Americans, and that's from a few years ago. Yeah. Right. So it's nothing new. And when we talk about, you know, something like the CIA bringing in cocaine, I don't think the guys are sitting around at the company picnic, hey, Bob, how much cocaine did you bring in this month? <laughs> that's right. You know, most guys probably didn't know so what like, was going on, but there were enough guys in. involved at the top or, you know, whatever uh, places that they need to be that allowed this to happen. Well, it's just like with the DEA is probably telling all the agents that are on the lower rungs, no, this is for the pharmaceutical companies, all of these, this heroin and poppy seeds. I don't know cocaine. what they told people about Iran-Contra, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Gary Webb figured it out. And, and, you know, when we look at this and we've had multiple sources telling us, uh, we've had Steve Pachinik, we've had uh, uh, Lieutenant Colonel um, Schaefer. Anthony Schaefer. Yeah. yeah. Uh, telling us that there were there were two different CIAs with two different agendas mm -hmm. there at Benghazi, okay? That was the background with this. And what they're saying is, is that, for instance, uh, in one instance, leaders at CIA headquarters sent a cable to the agency station in Pakistan saying operators there were not authorized to pursue a potentially lethal operation against the alleged al-Qaeda operative known as Abu Zubaydah. But a second set of instructions sent to a smaller circle of recipients told them to disregard the other message that the mission could proceed. Mm -hmm. So here you have, wow. you know, two different, uh, you could even say it was two different factions, but it's not necessarily even two different factions. It's just that the CIA is, is telling one story to one group of people to have them do one thing, another group to do another thing. And so they're fighting against each other. So whether or not it is a uh, confusion from the top, uh, compartmentalization that's causing this issue, eyewash that's causing it, or whether there's internecine uh, uh, fighting going on within the CIA. Right. Well, this is what happens when we have a dark government. Right. And these are the kinds of questions that are never even brought up in the presidential debates because yes. they would never question well, they the national security state. Either. Yeah, they would never question the national security state. They would never question the CIA. As you point out, if they try to uh, come after the CIA... They'll be basically slapped down, just like they were when they came in with the, the Pike Commission <laughs> hearings and the Church Commission hearings back in the 1970s. At that time, they knew that the CIA and the NSA were capturing the phone information of people even back then, yeah. okay, right. uh, 45 years ago. And when, they call, when the Pike Commission called in the NSA uh, and they were asking, Let, let's see your charter, I'm not going to show you the charter that I have. <laughs> it's a secret executive order from President Truman that created the NSA, and I'm not going to show it to the Congress. Yeah, yeah They're completely unaccountable. You know, these presidential candidates, pr pretty much their job is to give them a blank check and allow them to do whatever they want to do. You know, very few guys like, you know, like Rand Paul are actually opposing the things that are going on. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a very sad situation. This is the kind of thing that will happen with secret societies as well. They you'll yeah. get to know as far up in the levels as you are. This is why, uh, even regardless of what happens with the presidential uh, campaign, uh, unless we get involved as at the grassroots level in mass, we're not really going to change anything. Joining us now is Alex Jones. Alex. Uh, that or... Um, Go ahead, Alex. Thank Okay, we'll be back with Alex in just a moment. I think they're still getting set up there. Well, so, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting because we know that even, like, this secret government here with the CIA, how they have their, their 
they're dark guys there, and that is how secret societies are run, where mm -hmm. the, everything that's on the lower, everyone on the lower rung is only allowed to know a certain degree of information. Mm -hmm. And then once you graduate to the next level, then you can say, oh, that mission, go ahead and proceed. Re disregard everything you've learned up until this point. Exactly. What concerns me, too, is that this kind of thing, which has been going on now since World War II with the CIA, that is now the way that everyone interacts with you in government at any level. I mean, right. you go down and talk to the people who are running airport security, and they won't talk to you because it's now secret. Right. Uh, I think Alex is ready to join us now. Alex? Well, you're absolutely right, David. We have entered the national security state, and it doesn't make us secure. It makes us less secure. And that's what it was always designed to do. To ruling elites of being banking families is take technologies of social control used in the third world, in Southeast Asia, and Latin America, and Africa, and Eastern Europe, and they have exported those now directly against the people of Europe and the United States as they blow up the engine of liberty and free market innovation and development that gave them the combustion engine, the equations to create atomic weapons and power, that gave them the Wright brothers at Kitty Hawk, that, 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 that gave them the power to create the internet. They've now stolen the Promethean fire of the grassroots, middle class and working class people of every race, color and creed in the American melting pot. And they have now uh, basically come in and taken control of that system and are in a breakaway civilization right now and so that's what's happening um, this is really a question of does the elite really want to use technology and systems of control to dumb everybody down and stop the promethean fire of progress from being trans people or or to be truly enlightened folks and believe in humanity and that if you're so enlightened you shouldn't be afraid of other people being enlightened in well uh, as well but, but, but getting back to this key subject, before I get into the Iowa caucuses and Donald Trump in a dead heat with Ted Cruz, and as we predicted, Hillary a few points ahead of Bernie Sanders, I was uh, doing Google searches tonight, and I noticed a Salon article that, that is literally an organization that promotes pedophilia, the end of the family, just, just purity, the opposite of liberals the opposite of Thomas Jefferson, the opposite of human freedom. And it was an article about Donald Trump blows his cover. Donald Trump admits he's a fraud. Donald Trump admits it's all a scam. Uh, I don't have the headline in front of me, but it was something like Donald Trump, uh, you know, admits it's, a, it's, you know, you know, report proves he's a fraud. So I went and read the Politico report, and it's called How Donald Trump Did It. We'll put that article on screen. And it's exactly what I heard from folks in New York, media people I know, folks that Donald Trump doesn't know. And so people ask why I'm sold on Donald Trump. There's no way Donald Trump got people I know in Austin, Texas, five years ago to talk about how he was aware of the New World Order and the plan to kill America. There's no way that Donald Trump pre-planned all that. And, and, and you read the article that Salon spins, how Donald Trump did it uh, from Politico. It's how two plus years ago, two and a half years ago in 2013, he's there in New York. They want him to run for governor. And he's got 20 top Republicans in his office from the state. He says, listen, there are corporate interests ruining America that own our politicians. They're killing the country. I'm not going to stand here and watch this. Everybody falls down on their knees to the mainstream media when they're all a facade. I've seen it for myself. I'm going to go after them with no money from outsiders, knowing how to dominate their system and, and, and how to not cower to them. I'm going to destroy their system, showing it's a paper tiger and a facade. I mean, I was reading this article today, and it's all wrote it, the stuff Donald Trump's saying. So separately, since I got contacted by the Trump people uh, four or five months ago, since they came and visited me, and then I made other connections and found out. And then I ran into people I knew years ago who are business people and media people and others, very prominent names. They go, you didn't know Donald Trump listens to your show. You didn't know Donald Trump's one of us. And they go, Alex, we know you're the underground. 
we're like the overground now. We're 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 doing what you what you said we should do. And, and I'm not here claiming that you know Donald Trump does everything I say, and Donald Trump's an Alex Jones follower. But look at you know, it's no listens. You know, Matt Grudge, the list of the intelligence, everybody from Vigo Mortensen to you name it. We've hit the zeitgeist. You know, the new X Files taking a lot of our material. We don't have to sit here and explain to folks that, that that we have a big cultural impact. But but where we really have the impact is with the police, the military, and government people. Because they tune into Alex Jones and they go, no, no, that guy knows what he's talking about. That guy really understands how things work. And it's because of my upbringing, family, research, all of it. I know how to talk to the number two in the Japanese government who's been on the show or the head of the German CIA who's been on the show uh, or members of parliament who have been on the show from, Cam from England, from the UK. So the bottom line is InfoWars and what we do and, and what all of you have done such a great job tonight doing it isn't like you're following Alex Jones's drumbeat. It's a perspective that once you get outside the box, you see it. And a lot of times, David Dider, Jakari, or Leanne, or any of you guys see it clearer than I do. It's not like it's something special. Once you see it, you go, how did I never see that before? It's like the whole, you know, hidden image uh, photo on the wall, the dot matrix that once you see it, you say, how did I never see the guy playing the piano? Or how did I not see that design? Or how did I not see that bird? you know, that's in the picture on the wall. So imagine the evil of a group like Salon that to get attention has to have articles about how pedophilia is a great thing because they're so liberal. They think people have rights to your kids. You know, the, this, these are sick freaks. Having to say, in fact, Buckley, maybe Google it. I forgot the exact headline. It was like, uh, you just type in Salon Donald Trump. It's the latest article. You know, report Trump proven to be a fraud, something like that. And, and yeah, yeah, there it is. Trump... Donald Trump is a fraud. Report confirms the billionaire's presidential bid is long and calculated con job. But then you actually read what all these insiders said he was doing. This is what I was told by other insiders, that Trump is freaked out. He can't believe they're putting cancer viruses in the vaccines. He's against that. You know, he's, he can't believe that we make one-sided deals to sell out our industry and shut down our coal power plants when nobody else shuts theirs down. He can't believe it. So he was this maniac, son of German immigrants, out making tens of billions of dollars, having fun with me, you know, Miss USA and having all these hot Eastern European, you know, wives and stuff. You know, he, he's not perfect. But the fact that he'd reach out to me through Roger Stone ago, the fact that I go meet with other people and they go, you didn't know Trump was a listener years ago? And then there's Trump on my show saying, I will not let you down. Let me tell you. Again, I'm not bragging, but when I was only on air two years, but had the top ratings in Austin, I was contacted by high-level Democrats in Austin, like the, basically the head of the Democratic Party in Austin. And they said, we want you to come to meetings. You're going to meet Bill Clinton. He's coming to town next month. Blah, blah, blah. I don't talk bad about him anymore. We're going to really set you up in politics. And then when I talk bad about Bill Clinton again, because I was playing C-SPAN clips of Chinese generals in the White House and, and, the, and these junk it's on C-SPAN, said, okay, now you're going to pay. Now you're going to get it. And a few weeks later, Five guys in the parking lot physically attacked me saying, shut your mouth about Bill Clinton. They got me fired off local radio, you name it. So it's not just like Donald Trump reached his hand down to me and I said, oh my gosh, somebody reached their hand down from on top. I didn't even watch the X-Files tonight, even though I'm the basis of a lot of the new stuff. Because it's kind of like, you know what, I don't need to be that. Culture is going to follow what we do, not the other way around. We wag the tail, not, not the other way around. So it was a big deal tonight when I read that. That article, the Trump admits he's a fraud. You read the article, it's him in a meeting going, forget the governorship, folks. They're destroying the country. They're taking over. We need to get American jobs back and not let NAFTA and GATT screw us over. I'm going to fight back against this. And this is what I was told five months ago, that no, Trump's awake. He knows what's going on. He is an egomaniac, but he actually wants to be the guy that saves America. That's why the Bilderberg Group's so scared of him. That's why the whole elite is piling on against him. That's why they're doing everything they can to stop him. You think Trump's stupid, folks? If he gets elected and doesn't try to deliver now, he will be the lowest valued thing on earth. He will be the trash to be taken out. He's not going to do that. And that's why I think we're going to see an epic battle now. They're going to do anything they can to stop Donald Trump, folks. Just like they stopped Martin Luther King or, or Bobby Kennedy or JFK. Not that those men were perfect either, but JFK and, Bo and, 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 and Bobby Kennedy and, and, and Martin Luther King, if you really read about them, he was better than those two, Martin Luther. You know, King Jr., 
They really wanted to empower humanity. They really, Kennedy cut taxes by 50%. You know, they really wanted to go to the moon. They really wanted to.